the second thing that I took away was, and you kind of alluded to it, was that her patience, is, everything, her entire success is, is rooted in her patience, is in the fact that she's able to just sit in a place and watch. And that seems like a quality that is, you know, in our Twitter fast world is so not rewarded. And I feel like, um, I don't know what I feel like. You gave me a great idea to create a fake Jane Twitter feed for being in Gombe in 1962. <laughs> nothing happened. Yeah, nothing. Nothing, nothing happened. I'm nothing sitting happened. here waiting. Uh, that was, I have to tell you something about Jane. My favorite part as a filmmaker in her story was the portion when she didn't see any chimpanzees. Right. And it was because I loved how engaged she was with nothing. <laughs> she had nothing. Like there was nothing. She couldn't see a chimp. She was going to lose her fi funding. But she never stopped working. Whether she was eating, trying to figure out how they ate, where they slept. And to me, that was it. That defined it. That was that, was that thing that she had, that passion. That, that quest for knowledge. It, and you know, to me, that's really the, what the film is about. It's about passion. And it's not just hers, but Hugo's. And it, it, I think of this as a love story, but not in the traditional sense. It's not a love story between a man and a woman. It's a love story between a woman and her vocation, and a man and his vocation. And so ultimately, it has I a was, happy ending. It's they a go, happy ending. They go back to their real lovers. They go back to the lovers. And, and, and I was very concerned putting it together about how that would, how that would unfold. And there was a moment, um, and I think they might have been right. There's, there's one thing that I, I'm very iffy about whether it should have been in the film, but it's when Hugo's in the Serengeti and he's filming the lions with the, um, with the, the wildebeest, or the buffaloes. And someone in Nacho said, well, you know, that scene takes you right out of the narrative. Why is it in there? And I, I agreed. I said, yes, you're right. It is a slight detour. But the thing is, I wanted to show that Hugo, what he was, what was drawing him away from Jane you know, the majesty of, of the Serengeti and how that was an allure for him. And he had to do what he had to do. And I think for any of us in the room who are filmmakers, we know that one of the biggest challenges we struggle with is being trying to be a great artist and a great father or a great parent. And that I, I think is like the eternal challenge for any artist. Because to be, I think, good at your art is a sort of full commitment. And to be a parent is that you can't phone it in. It's a full, it's about being present. And Jane, you can see this in the film. I mean, how is, you, you know, it's, it's interesting because she's, I, I was so shocked when she brought Heat Grub to, at six years old. I was like, oh my God, what did she do? You know, but it's, it, the thing about Jane and the thing I love about Jane and the thing I love about Jane working with her on this film is, again, I didn't, I wasn't trying to just revere her and whatever. I mean, I was like, wow, you dropped your kid off. And she never blinked. There was no question in which she said, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, all the way until she saw the film at the end.